my age, within the tradition I was raised, there were retreats, for, for, especially for high schoolers, one for 9 and 10, and the other for 11 and 12th graders. And we would go and have activities that were geared toward our ages, but the thing that has stuck with me most from those times are the songs. This one, for instance. We are called, we are chosen, we are Christ for one another. We are promised to tomorrow while we are for him today. We are sign, we are wonder, we are sower, we are seed. We are harvest, we are hunger, we are question, we are creed. Wow, I found my lower register there. <laughs> It's an an the song is called Anthem. It was written by Tom Connery, who's known for his themes of peace and justice in his work. Chosen. This song, I have to tell you, filled me with great joy as a youth, uh, a young lady, maybe 14 or 15 years old when I first heard it. A song that planted the idea within me that I, too, was chosen by God. This idea that God had chosen me to do something meaningful was incredibly encouraging to me, left me with a sense of yet-to-be-fulfilled purpose, chosen to walk a way of peace, hope, and love as modeled in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, although I wouldn't have used those words at that time. Even to this day, I feel renewed in my spirit when I hear the words of Paul, for we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word, but also in power, in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. Paul had preached the good news of Jesus to the people of Thessalonica. Some had heard and received it, and inspired by the Holy Spirit, they were living into what meant it meant for their lives. They were chosen, and they embraced it and were living it. Being chosen implies being open to the Holy Spirit. Being chosen implies actually says directly that the Holy Spirit is present in the life of the believer. Now, as I read this text, the words, for many are called, but few are chosen, came to mind from the Gospel of Matthew. Those words had always unsettled me a bit until I started thinking about this letter this week. Being chosen speaks of a willingness to allow God to do God's transforming work within. It speaks of a willingness to engage in that transforming work in the world. So, God's love is for all, but not all receive that love. Not all embrace that love, I should say. Not all embrace the power of the Holy Spirit that comes with that love. Being chosen is seen in the fruit of the people of the church, the gathered community, the ecclesia. From a different letter, one to Galatia, we learn what that fruit looks like. The fruit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Being chosen means having the power of the Holy Spirit in one's life and one's life bearing that fruit visibly. Not just receiving the word and saying, yes, the Spirit is here, and once chosen means the fruit is present. Ah, but what does it mean, church, to be chosen for us? What does it mean to be chosen in a time of pandemic? What does it mean to be chosen in a time of national divide? What does it mean to be chosen in a time when some are inciting violence and peaceful protesters have tear gas and rubber bullets? What does it mean to be chosen in a denomination 
that is focused upon division instead of unity. The part of the letter we heard read today is filled with encouraging words. We're to receive the message today that we are chosen, you, I, we, all of us, Living life in the Spirit, walking away of faith in Jesus Christ, are chosen by God for something greater than ourselves. If nothing else in this sermon strikes you as encouraging today, that alone should. Paul affirms in his letter the community's work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ encourages his community. Paul had to do this through letters. That's why we have several letters. Not only do those letters encourage the communities that he brought together, the house churches that grew within those communities, but also they offer words of wisdom and guidance. Today I'm focusing, though, on the encouragement side. I don't know about you, but with everything that's going on, I could use a little encouragement from time to time. William Arthur Ward, a writer, and I think he had some Methodist connections, wrote this, flatter me and I may not believe you, criticize me and I may not like you, ignore me and I may not forgive you, encourage me and I will not forget you. In this letter, Paul encourages that first set of believers in that small community and encourages us by reminding us that in Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are chosen. Chosen to engage in the mission of God in the world. Chosen to, to grow. Not into people who are living the good life, but into people who are living a life that is good. That is what it means to be chosen to have the opportunity through the power of the Holy Spirit to live a life that is good. Encouragement is a key part of that. Encouraging one another in faith, encouraging our neighbors, encouraging, most often we just focus on children. But encouragement is key in Paul's letter so that the community is lifted up, so that the spirit within it is boistered. John Wesley wrote about this particular text. Faith works, la love labors, hope patiently suffers all. In this faith that we're hearing about today, that faith that John Wesley is talking about, that faith that Paul is talking about, we hear that it's not a sit-in-your-place kind of faith. Yes, we have to be social distance from one another so that we might remain healthy, but it doesn't mean we become inactive and still. For we are chosen to live lives that bear the fruit of the Spirit. Remember, lives that, that show love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Ah, but what does it mean, church, specifically, for us to be chosen? to not have us sit on our own sort of waiting for time to pass seats, but instead to be active bearers of Christ's love in the world. What does it mean to be chosen in this time of pandemic? I've seen a lot of different examples here of folks giving to the, the different ministries of the church, the, the Empowerment Center, the food bank, when others have been in need of reaching out and helping them as well. Indeed, this must be what it means to be chosen in a time of pandemic. What does it mean to be chosen in a time of national divide, in a time when some are inciting violence and peaceful protesters have been tear gassed and had bullets shot at them? I know that there are members of this community, this ecclesia, who have taken to the streets when there were protests early on back around the death of George Floyd. But what does it mean beyond just that for us? 
Our social justice team has made a way for us to grow in our understanding of what it means to not have white skin in this nation, in this day and age, of the differences, of the challenges, of the abuses that can happen when you're not part of the privileged white class. What does it mean for us, church? Are you paying attention to Wake Up Wednesdays? If you're not, it's, our social justice team has put together a wonderful collection of things to learn about and to blog with, to talk about, to help us grow. Remember, we, our goal is not to lead the good life, but to lead a life that is good in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, to live into being chosen. People who walk the way, empowered by God's Spirit. When I think of being chosen of God, I think of Moses and how he was chosen to lead the people of Israel out of slavery. I think of Samuel and how he was chosen to anoint the kings of Israel. I think of David and how he was chosen by God and empowered by God to unite a divided Israel. I think of the prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah, who even though they offered a word of caution about the people's missteps in relation to God, they also offered words of hope in those crazy times of wilderness and diaspora. What does it mean to be chosen by God? I think of Mary and of Joseph. I think of the apostles. I think of the women who supported Jesus and his ministry and the women who were at the cross. I think of the saints throughout time who have touched my own life, who have opened themselves up, have heard the good news of Jesus, have heard about the life, the death, and the resurrection hope that is in Christ I think of how God has worked in the world. So what does it mean, church, to be chosen? What does it mean to be chosen in a time of pandemic? What does it mean to be chosen in a time of national divide? In a time when peaceful protesters have violence wreaked upon them and others are inciting violence? What does it mean to be chosen in a denomination that is focused upon division instead of unity? It means to focus our hope on a resurrected Lord. It means to open our lives to the power of the Holy Spirit. It means to remember that faith works, that love labors, that hope patiently suffers all things. It means, family of God, be encouraged. For you are chosen. For we are called, we are chosen. We are Christ for one another. We are promised to tomorrow while we are for him today. We are sign, we are wonder. We are sower, we are seed. We are harvest, we are hunger. We are question, we are creed. May it be so, chosen people of God. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, Quiet us now. 